Good morning. My name is Dr. Neelam, PG resident from Vardhman Mahavir Medical College and Sabdarjang Hospital, New Delhi. Topic of my oral paper presentation is NCCT markers in prediction of hematoma expansion in spontaneous intracerebral hemorrhage. Aim is to study the role of NCCT markers as predictors of hematoma expansion in spontaneous intracerebral hemorrhage. And the objectives are primary objective is to evaluate the NCCT density and shape signs in predicting hematoma expansion. And the secondary objective is to analyze the diagnostic accuracy of various markers in predicting hematoma expansion. Spontaneous intracerebral hemorrhage is the second most common type of stroke and has poor prognosis as compared to the cerebral infarction. Hematoma expansion is major determinant of mortality and poor outcome after spontaneous intracerebral hemorrhage, which can be targeted in the therapeutic intervention. Hematoma expansion was taken as more than 6 cc of absolute growth or more than 33% of relative growth. A well-known marker of a spo are Sports sign on CT and geography can predict hematoma expansion, but CT and geography has its limitation in terms of contrast administration and non-availability in the remote areas. Hence, the reliable marker of hematoma expansion on NCCT are the need of the art. Various NCCT markers investigated, but there is great variability in reported diagnostic accuracies. Therefore, the need of the R is a consensus to define for reliable and objective criteria for prediction of hematoma expansion. Methodology is patients more than 18 years of age with clinical suspicion of in spontaneous intracerebral hemorrhage and confirmed on NCCT. The consent and detailed clinical history with GCS was taken in secondary ICH, patient with secondary ICH, hemorrhagic conversion of cerebral infarct and patients for anticoagulant treatment were excluded from the study. And in the study group, volume of hematoma was measured and signs of hematoma expansion were identified on the baseline scale. After 24 to 48 hours, a repeat NCCT was done and the volume of hematoma was measured again and observed for hematoma expansion is present or not and then statistical analysis was done. The sample size of the study was taken as 75%, 75 patients and the, that is based on study done by Boyles et al which observed the sensitivity and specificity for predicting hematoma expansion from hypodensity were 62% and 77% respectively. Diagnostic tests were used to calculate sensitivity, specificity, negative predictive value, and positive predictive value. A p-value of less than 0.05 was considered significant. Baseline sensitivity was assessed for the presence of various signs as defined, like hypodensity is any hypodense region strictly encapsulated within the hemorrhage with a, any size, shape, or density. Black hole sign was defined as hypotenuting area with a density difference of more than 28 HU compared with the surrounding hematoma, and no connection with the surface outside the hematoma should be present. Blend sign was defined as relatively hypotenuting area next to a hypertenuting area of the hematoma with a well-defined margin and a density difference of more than 18 HU between two areas. Iron sign is at, at least three scattered small hematoma, all separate from the main ICH or at least four small hematoma, some or all of which may connect to the ICH. A small hematoma of diameter less than 10 mm separate from the main hemorrhage in at least one slice or distinct from the main hematoma by 1 to 20 mm separation was considered a satellite sign. And the swell sign is defined as the round stick like or irregular region of hypo, hypo or isotenuation compared with the brain pain chyma and does not have to be encapsulated in the ICH. Results are taken in form of sensitivity, specificity, PPV, NPV and the diagnostic accuracy and found that swell sign and satellite sign were the best parameter in terms of specificity, PPV, and NPV. And the best parameter in terms of specificity and diagnostic accuracy was the blend sign. In our study, GCS at presentation, midline shape, baseline volume, swell sign, satellite sign, and the presence of multiple sign were significantly associated with the hematoma, significant hematoma growth with the p-value of less than 0.05. This bar diagram, uh, shows the distribution of NCCT based signs in terms of frequency in our study, in which swell sign and satellite sign were the most frequent signs seen in our study. These double bar graph signs 
double bar graph shows the association between significant hematoma growth and the various sensitivity markers. Representative cases are 50 year old male, uh, hypertensive male presented with loss of consciousness and right sided hemiparesis for two hours. The baseline sensitivity was done and shows acute interparenchymal hematoma in left lentiform nucleus without significant midline shift. And it shows there is a hypodense area within the hyperdense hematoma with the uh, attenuation difference of more than 20 HU was considered as black hole sign. The volume of hematoma was measured by volume of interest method by manually drawing around it. The patient had clinical deterioration and the follow-up sensitivity scan was done after 18 hours, which shows increased size of hematoma and intervention ventricular extension. In other case, 48 year old hypertensive male with right side hemiparesis and ultrasensorium for six hours, baseline sensitivity with acute interparenchymal hematoma in left frontal and parietal lobes with midline shift was seen with the baseline, baseline hematoma volume of 49.9 cc. There is a central hypodensity present within the hematoma indicative of the positive swan sign. In the other section, in this scan, the density difference of more than 18 HU between, uh, between two adjacent area was seen and sensitivity of the brain sign. And in the same case, there are three or more than three hematoma, it's all separate from the main hematoma was seen and that positive island sign was considered. In the follow-up sensitivity done after 17 hours, hematoma expansion was pre present taken by the volume of hematoma method. In another case, 56 year old hypertensive female was presented with headache and right sided hemiparesis for two hours. And on baseline sensitivity, shows the hypodense focus of attenuation with the density difference of more than 28 HU compared with the surrounding hematoma and was indicative of the black hole sign present. The volume of hematoma was taken by VI method and on the follow up scan done after 45 hours, there was no hematoma growth and the static hematoma volume was seen. Spontaneous intracerebral hemorrhage confers a poor prognosis than the cerebral infarction and the NCCT remains the cornerstone imaging modality in its diagnosis as it is widely available. It would be possible to identify individuals who would benefit from therapeutic intervention by identifying those with the highest risk of hematoma expansion, which would help with the prognostication. Heterogeneous density like swell sign, black hole sign, and the blend sign are represent the active bleeding within the hematoma. Shape markers like island sign and the settler sign are likely due to the multifocal hemorrhage. In our study, density and shape markers on the baseline sensitivity were found to be useful tool to predict the hematoma expansion. Swell sign, settler sign, and the presence of multiple signs were significantly associated with the significant hematoma growth with the p-value of less than 0.05. The sensitivity, PPV and PV of soil and satellite sign were equal and highest among the five parameters and the blend sign was the best parameter in terms of specificity and the diagnostic accuracy. A good sensitivity of 70% of soil sign and satellite sign will help recognize the patients with high chances of hematoma expansion and the high NPV of 84.2% of the blend sign value will be useful to safely exclude the patient not requiring the intensive medical management to prevent the hematoma expansion. Hence, limited availability of CTA and rapid expansion of hematoma in some patients who offer only a narrow window to prevent the hematoma expansion makes the NCCT markers as useful parameters to predict the hematoma expansion. It also helps in identifying the patients with low risk of hematoma expansion, so precautions from the overtreatment associated with the hematoma expansion can be taken. These are my references. Thank you.